So welcome back and in this part we're going to be creating our core folder and actually connecting to our database and we're essentially setting ourselves up here to include anything we like um, functionality wise uh, so for example if we decide that later on down the line uh, we want to go ahead and incorporate a forum or uh, a guest book we can do all of our function functionality or create all of our functionality within these files and then just include them into our overall initialization file so uh, let's go ahead and and start we'll um, uh, open up an open dialog and remember we created this core folder at the moment it contains nothing uh, that's fine we can go ahead and, and fill this up which is what we're going to be doing in this part um, so the three folders that we're going to create in here uh, sorry the two folders that we're going to create in the file um, the two folders are for database activity so in this case we're just connecting we're not doing anything else we're going to have one for functions and then we're going to have a, a file called init which is going to initialize everything and it's going to pull everything together include everything that we need and we're going to apply that to the top of every page that we create so let's create our folders first um, the first one like I said is database that's just going to house our connection script uh, we're going to have functions which is going to hold all of our functions so for example logging the user in registering the user account showing different statistics and, and like i said if you incorporate a guest book you can pop everything in here and use it in the site uh, sorry we're not creating a third folder we are creating a new file so let's go ahead and create a new file in here and i'm going to save this as init.php so what do we need to do within init.php? Um, well, uh, as I said, we need to include all, all of our, our files, but we don't have any yet. So the first thing that we want to do is because we are allowing users to log in, we're making use of sessions. So we need to, the first, literally the first thing we want to do at the very top of our page is, is start sessions. So I'm going to use the session start function, and this needs to be called before we use any sessions. So as long as we've got this in the init file, we're going to include this at the top of every page that we create. So we know that we, uh, we, we're starting sessions on every page. So if we're checking if the user's logged in or not. Okay, so let's go back to our uh, files. Um, database, uh, the database folder is going to contain our connection script. So let's go ahead and, uh, and create that first and then include it. So we're, we're connecting on every page that the user lands on. That's obviously important as well. So I'm going to create a file. I'm going to save it in database and I'm going to save it as connect.php. So I'm going to be using uh, the two functions that we usually use to connect, uh, which is MySQL connect and mysql select db so we're using mysql connect to, to connect to a mysql server with a, a host name a username and a password and our, our select db is going to select our database so the three values here for me are localhost i'm running on my local machine but if you're uploading to a public server this is almost always going to be localhost as well um, then my username root and my password which at the moment's nothing now where do I find this information if uh, I don't know how I'm connecting well if you're running on a local server you most likely haven't been forced to set a password on, on any databases that you've created so I'm gonna jump over to PHP my admin and I'm gonna go ahead to home and I'm gonna click the privileges tab at the top here now you can see that uh, we've got a list of sort of users almost now here you can see two versions of root, one on 127.0.0.1, which is equivalent to localhost. We've got all privileges, which means that we can insert records, uh, remove records, join tables, whatever else. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, all privileges. Uh, and then if we uh, look under password field, it says no. So we know that our host name is localhost, our username is root, and our password does not exist, so we can just do uh, a well, we can just leave this blank like I've done here. Now the database that we know, uh, we know we called LR, uh, we can go over to this here. So we know we've called our database LR, so we can just place that in there. And essentially that's it. Um, we can include things to check if, if we haven't connected, for example, or die MySQL error. So for example, if, if oh, sorry, MySQL error. Now this is a function within a die um, statement, if you like. So the script will be killed at this point. Nothing will run 
uh, below this and then we'll echo out the MySQL error. Now this isn't recommended for runtime on a, on a public server where you're having users access the page because uh, if they see errors like this they get to know your directory structure and, and things like that so it's not a good idea to leave leave this open so I just go ahead and get rid of this for now if you're having problems you can debug that way so connect we're done we don't need to add anything else to here so we can close this now within init I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to require any files that we need now almost always the first thing that we're going to be doing here is actually requiring this connect script because anything underneath it is going to use our connection so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to require uh, and I'm going to require database forward slash connect dot php so this is connecting and then anything else below here can use this script uh, this connection to its advantage so if we go ahead and refresh here, nothing happens, and mainly because we haven't included init.php. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be getting into the routine of including this at the top of every page that I make. So include, um, uh, let's think it's core forward slash init.php. So remember we are on the index page, we're including core init.php, which is then including database uh, connect function and it's including any, including any functions that we create. We'll, we haven't created any yet, but we will be doing. Okay, so we've done that. Let's go ahead and refresh. Uh, nothing's happened, so uh, assume we have no errors in our connection script. Let's go ahead and just force an error quickly, just so we know if, if, anything's, uh, if anything, well, what kind of output we get. So I'm gonna remove the username there, and I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. And nothing's happening, which is odd. Uh, let's go ahead and check everything is here. Let's go ahead and say local HST instead. Oh no, we're not getting any errors. Oh no, it's because we're on register.php. <laughs> okay, so we'll go index.php and we should. There we go, we've got an error at the top there. So that doesn't look very nice. Um, you know, it's, it's not great. If, if your database connection does fail for some reason on your site, you're probably gonna wanna show your users something a lot nicer than that. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn error reporting off. So if I say error reporting zero, uh, you'll notice that this will go. So that's the first thing, uh, that's gone. Uh, so we're not re revealing any path names to our users or any detailed information about what we're doing. So here I've set error reporting off, I've just passed a zero through to this. And in connect, what we could do is we could have some uh, generic connection message, so uh, connect error, for example. Uh, this could be defined in another file. It's quite messy to do it in the same file, but we could say, uh, sorry, um, we, we're we experiencing downtime, or something like that, or, or connection issues. Uh, and what we can do here is we can use or die, as we've seen before, and we can actually pass through this connect error variable. So, or die, we can do exactly the same with MySQL select DB, so connect error. So now what's gonna happen is when we refresh, uh, it kills the script and we just pass, well, we just show the user this, this message here. Uh, it's entirely up to you, I'm not gonna go into this too much more, but we'll leave it uh, as it is for now. Uh, oops, we need to go ahead and actually connect to the right place, so connect local host. And there we go, we're back on. Perfect, so let's go ahead and close this. Now, the next thing we want to do is, because we're gonna be uh, logging our users in, registering our users, we want to go ahead and require, oops, we want to go ahead and re require in a file um, from our functions folder. So, uh, I haven't created this file yet, but I'm including it already. Uh, I'm including users.php within our functions folder. So, let's go ahead and create that file. So inside of our functions, we're going to create a, f uh, a file called users.php. And this is going to be the home of all of the functions that allow, well, that do anything relating to users. So we may have one called, um, I don't know, general, which might sanitize data, or you could call it security.php, which sanitizes any data. Um, we're also going to create one called statistics.php, which show, for example, things like the amount of users that have registered on your site. Uh, this could also be things like users that are, are currently logged in, anything like that. Uh, so we're going to uh, leave this as it is for now. Um, that's basically it. We've included connect, so we're connected to our database. Uh, and in the next part of the tutorial, we're going to be looking at actually allowing the users to log in.